last three months, I've been studying to become a freediving instructor, and the good news is I've passed. So it's really exciting, it means I can officially teach freediving, and my first student is, of course, Lou. Uh, normally Lou has her camera in her hand, but here she's heading down to 20 metres. After the instructor course, it was a bit more relaxed, and it meant that we could go and explore. Just near Radazul, there's a place called Tabaiba, and that's where this wreck uh, is. It was really fun to go and explore. The top of the wreck is at about 18 metres, and yeah, here's Lou going down and enjoying the, the views. At this point, I thought Lou was going to head back up. You can see I turn and, and oh, no, she's heading off. <laughs> she's super comfortable down at this depth, which is great to see. In fact, shortly after this video, we were back in Radisson freediving again, and Lou managed to reach 30 meters in free immersion which was one of her bucket list goals for this trip. So, well done Lou, you personal best. We received delivery of this new white uh, freediving boy that we're holding onto here. So we're all set up, we're ready for you guys. I've started a new business called Seriously Good Freediving, which you can look up online and you can come and join us for some really fun days out. So shortly after this, our time to, in Rudders all came to an end. Our friends Paul, Paula and Roger decided they would come and join us for the first day to see us off. We actually delayed our departure by about a week uh, to wait for good weather and we were really glad we did. As soon as we left the bay we were joined by some spotted Atlantic dolphins which was super super nice. But the day was, was over almost before it began and we had to wave goodbye to friends that we'd really got to know over the last couple of months. We spent our first night in this place called Playa Amaria on the anchor and uh, in the morning it was just super calm and really nice. I was having a bit of a lion. Lou woke me up with breakfast and coffee. And we were about to have, we didn't know it at the time, but we were about to have one of the best days out on the water so far. Just out from Tenerife, there's an area of water that's designated as a hope spot. It's not yet been given protection status, but it's really important for cetaceans of all types. But one of the resident populations are these pilot whales. enough to get the GoPro in the water. You're not allowed to swim with them so we just put our GoPro on a stick and shoved it under water and we're lucky to get a little bit of footage. Just immaculate conditions with uh, the tidy volcano in the background and Lou got some stunning pictures. Floating in the water was also this loggerhead turtle um, and they eat these little guys that I'm approaching very carefully here, this Portuguese man of war. And these can give a really nasty sting, I love this photo Lou took. But we decided we'd get in and swim with them anyway to try and get some photos, we just have to be really careful and stay well clear of the tentacles. So here's one up close. They actually have the little fish swimming around them, um, that must be immune to the sting. And you can see here actually the long blue trailing tentacle, that's the one you've got to watch out for, disappears off for many, many meters. I was also able to get in and see the turtle. I swam over and he was pretty friendly to be honest, not too worried about my presence. It was so, so nice to see it in the water.
Well, first night on Lago Mero was at a place called Playa Ch Chingo Irime, I think it's pronounced. And we woke up the next morning to, well, like a really dreamy sort of sunrise, flat calm conditions. Uh, it's just, you know, perfect. We feel so, so blessed and grateful to be having these times, especially whilst the world is in a pandemic. You can just row your tender into the beach when the swell's not too big and uh, it's actually a nudist beach. It didn't take me too long to get into the spirit of things. Oh look, he's swimming with his dog. Pretty dreamy lifestyle when it all comes together. There's a lot of hard work getting the boat ready, selling the house, but days like these are just, they make it all worthwhile. So Tom, what's happening? Well, it's the gearbox is not working. 
or he went to leave and uh, yeah no forwards or backwards thrust so we had to quickly drop the anchor again as we were drifting onto the beach so but a disaster averted at least the engine is not working in a place where we're not getting blown on shore and you yeah. know we can drop the anchor safely so so now I've got to try and work out why the gearbox isn't working and fix it in the engine bay Tom actually right in there yeah I think I may have <laughs> fucking worked out the problem but whether we can get it going again literally the, the whole gearbox has become disengaged from the propeller Some of you know that we've already had lots of engine trouble this winter and spent thousands of euros trying to get the engine fixed. This was a brand new problem, um, but luckily I had just the bolts that I needed. I can tell you what, it was a huge, huge sigh of relief when we managed to get it fixed and we tried the forward gear and we were able to, we were able to set off again. Success!